Conspiracy theories used to be part of the fringe, but the Internet has made these false ideas more rampant, often with dangerous or even deadly consequences. Believers aren't all crackpots. Some are even intelligent. So why do smart people believe claims that are far-fetched or downright silly? We all like to think we're critical thinkers, but so many of us become gullible victims by failing to detect weak evidence. Why? Let's take a look. 1835, famed astronomer John Herschel discovers a civilization of bat people on the moon. Everyone knows it's true. It's right there in the New York sun. Of course, it's a hoax. And that's what makes it a magical belief, is when you reject observable evidence in the face of an explanation that's based on something that you can't observe. People love a great story, and a juicy conspiracy theory seems to offer something many people crave, certainty. For some, any answer is better than no answer. It helps them navigate a reality that can be overwhelming and confusing. When people have beliefs, they hold fast to them. They're, they're like life preservers in a stormy sea. They're not going to let go of them. But life doesn't mirror the narrative of a novel with neat plot lines, conflicts, and resolutions. And for some people, like Jonathan Shemansky of Florida, that is terrifying. Number one cause for me is um, politics. Any anti-Obama conspiracy basically at the time, I, I would believe in. It may be more comforting to think a small group is in control. A small group can be defeated. Complex causes seem like we're caught in a web that's impossible to untangle. Any animal that doesn't make sense of its surrounding is going to be dinner pretty soon. What conspiracy theories do is provide us these shortcuts for managing our, emo our own emotions. They're kind of like Xanax. Uh, they're like an easy Xanax for us. They, they basically help us feel better. It works for Jonathan Shemansky, at least for a while. Is there a way to help people avoid the dark world of misinformation emanating from the bright lights of media channels or the dark corners of the Internet? Conspiracies are real. Colonials conspire to rebel against King George. Conspiracy theories also go back a long way. Late 18th century British mathematician John Robeson writes a book, Proofs of a Conspiracy, which claims the Illuminati masterminded the French Revolution. A few Massachusetts ministers like Jebediah Morris believe this conspiracy theory and worry the Illuminati will abolish Christianity and overthrow the American government. But in time, the evidence outweighs their imagination. American political history is rife with conspiracy theories. Eric Oliver is a professor of political science at the University of Chicago. He becomes interested in conspiracy theories in the 1990s when a man stops him on a street corner handing out conspiracy theories on paper. Nobody really knows the secret formula, but I think those conspiracy theories that have probably greater staying power are more likely to tap into our intuitive ways of understanding the world. Handing out flyers on a street corner or delivering political pamphlets by horseback in colonial America is nothing compared to the digital distribution of ideas which disseminate around the world with one click. What social media has done, it's allowed for what we might call transgressive beliefs, beliefs that really fall outside of the mainstream norm to have this ability to proliferate. Social media companies' algorithms value clicks over facts. The business model is engagement, sometimes at the expense of a well-informed society. And I think that's really dangerous for democracy. Jonathan Shemansky agrees. He's now an ex-conspiracy theorist. How does that happen? Basic college education. I took a few um, foreign policy classes in college, and that really opened my eyes to how complicated the world is, which is once you realize that, it's hard to have a, a paranoid view when you know things, things are that random sometimes. Truth is complicated and often dull. Conspiracy theories blur fact with fantasy. 
Starting in 2017, the online conspiracy theory movement QAnon helps move these ideas from the margins to the mainstream. I think what happened with QAnon was that it was sufficiently mysterious and poetic that it really captured people's imaginations. It was a very well-constructed set of myths that were out there that were just intriguing enough that you know people wanted to see what would happen next. And it was always, we'll give you an update next week. Popular conspiracy theories include the idea that California wildfires are set deliberately by space-based laser beams. That's posted on social media by Marjorie Taylor Greene, now a congresswoman from Georgia. The Pizzagate conspiracy theory claims Democratic Party officials run a human trafficking and child sex ring in restaurants. Claims like these seem ridiculous, but in some cases, people act on them. One man claiming to investigate Pizzagate in 2016 fires a rifle inside a pizza place in Washington. On Christmas morning of 2020, Anthony Quinn Warner packs his RV with explosives and detonates it in Nashville, blowing up his RV and himself. Police say he's motivated in part by a fear of 5G technology and alien lizard people. In my research, I basically figured out that the, the world is divided between people who are very rationalistic in their orientation. They believe in logic, they believe in facts, they believe in science. And there are people who really rely heavily on their intuitions to make judgments. And they are really drawn by symbols and metaphors and myths. And this category of people, they tend to have a lot of supernatural beliefs. They have a lot of paranormal beliefs. Conspiracy theorists may claim to be skeptics, challenging the prevailing wisdom, but deciphering evidence can be difficult. They tend to cherry pick the facts that make their case. Real skeptics use science, while conspiracists rely on their emotional filter, what speaks to them, for whatever reason, usually a sense of fear or unfairness. When my son was five, he woke me up in the middle of the night and said, Dad, Dad, there's a monster in the closet there, and there's a monster in the closet. And I went through, and I opened the closet, and I turned on all the lights, and I said, Ethan, there's no monster here. Look, we can reason through. There's no monster. The house is secure. And then he turns to me, and he looks, and he says, Well, Dad, there's no monster in the closet. Then why am I afraid? And that was a, a really telling moment there, because it was clear that you know his beliefs are there to serve his emotional needs. They're not actually there to give an accurate representation of reality. A child may be easier to set straight than an adult set in their ways. Is there a strategy that works? One of the things that we've learned is simply going forward and telling people your beliefs are wrong or you know, this is not correct generally doesn't work. What I oftentimes do when I'm talking to people is sort of say, well, what is this belief doing for you? How is this working for you? So you have this conspiracy theory. How is that helping your life? Is that making things really better for you? And what about tech companies? Do they bear some responsibility in all of this? Given the fact that they have a profit structure and they really benefit from living in a stable political order that we provide, they have a responsibility to sustaining that. Jonathan Shemansky has a Facebook page called The Ex-Conspiracy Theorist Guy to open a dialogue with conspiracy theorists, which include many former friends. Mostly online, they accuse, accuse me of being a, a government shill or someone who got paid by the government. I think it encourages civil discourse, the idea of us have, being able to have a shared reality. It's like if we can't agree with, of, about what's actually happening, um, we'll get nothing done. Once we have leaders being able to tell us, tell the constituents when they're wrong, that, that's, that'll be a, a step forward. For more on this backstory, check out WGNTV.com slash backstory. Okay, Coming up, the latest additions to the stable of dancing lipizzans. <laughs> 